This is the Flysky FS GT 3C and it has the modified firmware in it so that you can have up to eight channels and control every button on here and there's a video by Overkill RC and he did a lot of the modifications in here but he used a programmer that uh, didn't really make any sense to me and I didn't find any other information online on how to use that programmer until I uh, did quite a bit of research and so I wanted to update this and uh, we're actually I got another one brand new in the box and we're gonna modify it and uh, change everything with it. So this is basically an unboxing as well so here's a brand spanking new still has a seal on it brand spanking new Fly Sky FS GT 3C. So we got a uh, battery right here, and pull the battery out of the case. Got the manual. Get a USB cable, and then a larger uh, rubber back strap for the uh, controller, uh, the controller itself, of course. And then they included a receiver, which didn't uh, was it was actually a surprise to me when I got this controller because I I had no idea it came with one. And so it comes with the FS GR three E three channel and it has fail safe built into it so that's a good deal i'm going to use this on another car uh, that i have for sure so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this uh this top off and it starts by pulling these pieces of rubber out it's out of the way Take these two screws out. And then, nice little trick, again from Overkill RC, is to unscrew these guys most of the way out of there. helps open up the case give it a little flex so we don't break the, the pins that are or the snap points that are on here which is on here and then you kind of tweak this a little bit and you can you can get it open you might have to work with it a little bit to get that to, to get that to pop open but really you just pull up pull up on that end and it will start to pop out and it just comes right off now we're going to disconnect the disconnect the three cables that are on there. Just pull those off. They are a bit tough. Just be careful pulling them off. Okay. Now, what we need to do is we need to solder some header pins onto this spot right here, onto those four points. So, what I've got here is I've got a few. Got just a four piece header pin uh, overkill RC he took his and created a port and cut the case I'm not going to cut the case I don't think I'll ever have to program the firmware again but you saw how quickly I was able to take the take the case apart to get to this so if I were to ever need to program it again I just have to be in this state so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take the board off of this and then I'm gonna solder this from the other side which is pretty close proximity but I'm gonna solder these four pins onto onto that right there so that we can just plug into that with the uh, ST programmer at a later time so let's get this apart then. remove it from here uh, the only ones you need to the only screws you need to remove are this one this one this one and this one, those four. These two hold on the uh, the spinner, uh, so that is you don't have to take those off. It's just those four holding it onto the onto the plastic. Okay, 
here and that comes out. We're going to get the buttons, keep those off to the side. And the nice thing about the way this goes in here is we're just going to set those pins right there. Set this right here and I've already got the soldering iron ready to go. So we're just going to solder those four pins on right away. Okay, and you can see I've got that soldered on, and that will clear the case once it's inside. That is all we have to do in here now. We'll put the buttons back in place. Flip this back over. is back where it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be kind of in that slot and then it was tucked underneath that circuit board right there so that it's up and up and out of the way. And then we're going to put those screws back in. Okay, that's it. Now we can take it to the computer and get a program and all we need to do is set it up on here. Let's head out and do that. Okay, so this will be a pretty quick guide as to how to get through this. Uh, if you need a little bit more detail, uh, check out Overkill RC's video on this. He uh, uh, takes a little bit more, more time explaining this stuff. But uh, basically, we're going to uh, start by downloading the firmware that you need. And so you're going to go to Google and type uh, GT3B firmware GitHub, and it's this first one right here you're going to get the uh, alternative firmware you're going to click on releases and you're going to scroll down to the gt3b061.s19 click on that you're going to right click on raw save link as and then you're going to save it wherever you need to save it and i'm just going to put it on my desktop here so the gt3b061 Place it. I've already got it there, so now that's saved. Now we got to go to uh, the ST, get the ST Virtual Programmer downloaded, and I've already got this installed. But uh, you need to go here, search for ST Visual Programmer, come in here, scroll down, and uh, get and click Get Software, and it makes you uh, give give some info so you can get their software. Get that downloaded, and then make sure you have your uh, ST Link V2 hooked up and you're going to hook up your SD Link V2 just like this. And we've got already got our pins soldered onto here. So make sure you have your jumper wires connected properly so that you have uh, these pins connected correctly to the according pins on the SD Link V2. And then when you open up the SD Link Visual Programmer, you're gonna get a screen like this and you're gonna choose SD Link and then you make sure it's USB and swim because that is our programming mode. And then you're going to scroll down until you find STM8S105X6 and choose that and hit OK. And then from here we're going to we're going to read the current. And you can see I was able to get that read. And then you're going to save. Uh, you're going to save as so that you can save this uh, stock firmware file. So you can see I have a GT3 stock firmware actually this is number two for me so i'm going to save that as number two just in case <clears throat> even though they're probably identical and so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, write the new firmware so you go to file open or click the open button and then we're going to find the uh, the file that we downloaded earlier here's the gt3b061.s19 and double click that it's going to open it and then you're going to use this button program current tab or active sensors and you click the program button 
and you can see program memory successfully verified and that is it now the radio is all done and programmed so uh, let's get back downstairs into the basement and put this thing back together so that we can get it hooked up to a receiver and make sure it works Okay, let's see if we can uh, get this thing back together now that we got it all programmed. I've already hooked up the cables here. You can see these pins are just going to sit just perfectly inside. Uh, the case is still loose here. I think that that's important because uh, I don't think that uh, the I can get the micro USB port in place very well without doing that. So I would suggest starting by making sure the micro USB port on the back side is aligned properly. So go go in from this side first. So that you can get the USB port in place and then make sure all the rest of them are snapped down after. Everything snaps in, including this side. Micro USB port is good. Everything's tight here, so now I'll tighten up the three screws on the side. two back in and last but not least our tiny little buddies here go now it's all done now we can turn it on I've already been through the calibration process on this there are uh, many other videos out there with information about calibrating this getting it all set up and uh, with all the preferences for what you need for uh, your RC car so I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and it helped uh, clarify a few things with uh, specifically this one the FSGT3C anyway enjoy